Most people don't think much when it comes to the chairlift. It picks you up, brings you to the top of the hill, rinse and repeat, but how did this staple of the ski industry come to be? How were bananas critical to its founding? And how is all of this related to Midwest skiing? Let's talk about some chairlift history. What's going on Midwest skiers and riders? Matthew Zabranski with MidwestSkiers.com and today we are talking all about chairlifts. Struggling up and down the stairs or living- Wait, no, no. Much better. Now before we dive into the story of how the chairlift was founded, it's important that we set the stage of what the environment looked like at the time. The year was 1936 and skiing in the United States was still in its infancy stage. There were a few ski areas, mostly located in the Midwest and the East, but they all relied on the rope tow to get their skiers to the top. But this would soon change. Enter Averill Harriman, who was the president of Union Pacific Railroad. He had seen the success of ski resorts in Austria and wanted to create that same successful model in the United States. He envisioned a bigger resort that was on his famed railway that was away from major cities to avoid crowds, and he ended up landing on Ketchum, or better known as Sun Valley, Idaho. So the stage was set, but Averill knew he needed something better than the traditional rope tow to haul his guests up to the top. So he set up a meeting with Jim Curran. Jim Curran was a civil engineer and was one of the leaders in moving bananas from the plantation to the rail yards. Since moving bananas by traditional means caused bruising, he helped create a system involving an overhead moving wire and a series of hooks. This would allow workers to simply hook bananas onto the wire to transport them to the rail yards. Jim thought a similar method could be used with skiers by adding a chair to an overhead wire to scoop the skier up to bring them to the top of the hill. A couple of days later, Jim had constructed a prototype of his idea by hanging a swinging chair off of some scaffolding on the back of a pickup truck. But this baby is pretty sweet. They called in a friend dressed in full wool ski gear threw some hay on the ground and began testing. The speed of the chairlift was absolutely critical to the operation. It needed to be fast enough to scoop the skier, but not too fast where the chairlift would slam into the back of the skier's leg, cause I know that most of us have been there. <gasps> Jim would drive his makeshift chairlift to simulate a skier pickup to figure out the perfect speed, but it was quickly discovered that the hay was not nearly as slippery as snow and they tried adding different oils, but nothing really seemed to work. After a long day of testing, the group was enjoying a couple of beers while looking at this makeshift chairlift and thought to themselves, what if we use that patch of concrete over there and put our skier on roller skates instead of skis? The next morning, the group tested that theory and it was successful. They were able to figure out the perfect speed to scoop up the skier. Now all they needed to do was build it. The goal was to have the lift fully built on Dollar Mountain by Christmas of 1936 to kick off Sun Valley's winter season. The entire lift was fabricated in Union Pacific's rail yards of Omaha, Nebraska, and was actually moved via railway up to Sun Valley. And since there were no bulldozers that could carry the weight of the cable they used for their lift, they had to use over 30 mules to carry the first chairlift cable up the mountain for install. Ultimately, they met their goal and finished the entire lift project in less than five months. Pretty dang impressive if you ask me. The only problem was, Sun Valley didn't get any snow until February 2nd, and despite the delayed opening, riders were still treated with the first chairlift rides in skiing history. So okay, okay, you're probably wondering how all of this connects to Midwest skiing. Well, that same chairlift several years later would be sold to Boyne Mountain in Michigan in 1947, and with Boyne's opening in 1948, it would become the first chairlift ever in the Midwest. In fact, that chairlift still remains in operation today, sort of. Next time you're at Boyne Mountain, be sure to take a ride on the Hemlock Lift. Although the lift has been upgraded over the years by Riblet, the terminals and the drive are still the original. So although you're not riding on the exact same lift they built in 1936, and trust me, you'll be happy you're not, it's, a classic. it's still quite the historical experience. And I think it's a pretty amazing feat that Boyne was able to keep some of the original parts through all these years of renovations. And speaking from the Midwest ski community, 
Thank you, Boyne Mountain. So next time you're preparing for your big ski day, grab a banana and think of Jim Curran because without them, skiing might not be the same. I hope all of you guys have a great week. Stay safe. And until next time, I'll see you guys out there.